Incarcerated as we are in our various dwellings, I've been asked to provide a little entertainment uh, for you. And so I decided to read a little bit out of my uh, memoirs, my memories, uh, uh, memories. So I thought this is part one and this will be about the place where I met the Captain Sensible. The Zap Club was founded by Neil Butler and others as an experiment to mix radical art with cutting entertainment. After migrating from venue to venue, like the old Richmond where I'd seen it, it settled into its own home base in King's Road arches along the sea front. The club had a real vibe about it. I feel it should go down in history alongside the Cabaret Voltaire the place where Dada was invented in Zurich in the early 20th century. But this was the mid-1980s and in Britain. It was the place for the alternative, the unusual and sometimes the downright odd and ridiculous. Over many years I saw alternative theatre companies like Open Secret, stand-up comedians like Malcolm Arnold, who appeared on The Young Ones, and why not? Modern dance and performance art. Bands played there too, later on. I saw Mr David Allen with Gong Maison there. And the Beau Gamelan Ensemble, who used to use vacuum cleaners and all sorts of industrial noise-making devices. And I saw Robin Hitchcock. I believe this was 1985. And it was at that gig that I first met Captain Sensible. My sister was with me and a friend of hers called Paul, who rather embarrassed us by going up to the captain and saying he didn't like his latest album, which is The Power of Love, a great album which includes Glad It's All Over and also Hard to Believe or Not. It's a great album. And we told him so. So sod you, Paul. <laughs> uh, we found the captain really friendly and approachable. But I didn't really get to know him then, not until he started attending the Tuesday night platform. <clears throat> Confessions of a Tuesday night veteran. A platform night, I guess it's in a, what you call an open mic night now, and that was the night of the zap where I used to play. Alistair and his friends, Alistair is my friend up the road from Eastbourne Art College who has this crazy collective called the Vitamin B12, who make all kinds of strange music and noises, told me that you could get in free to the Tuesday night platform if you played. I wanted to play anyway. And it was a chance to try out Kate Bush's advice. Kate Bush, I'd sent her recordings of my songs, and she wrote back to me, bless her, and she said, you should try playing live. And I thought, where can I do that? What place would accept what I do? I was a bit scared to set up my own gig at that time. So this platform night was the perfect place to try out ideas. When we first went along, the club was very small. Just two long tunnel-like rooms connected by a door. And the toilets and cloakroom were downstairs. I guess it must have been a warehouse for storing barrels in view of the shape. I went along with Francesca and her friend Danny... Alistair and his friends, Russell, Francesca's then boyfriend, who also was there and took photos. The compare, the compare was the incomparable Mr. Ian Smith, of course, the perfect MC, and a great performer in his own right, as MCs often are. And here he is, the great Ian Smith himself. Not a particularly unusual name but a very unusual fellow. He's no longer with us, I'm afraid. He was a tall man with long, thin sideburns and a triangular piece of makeup above one eye. 
He had a flair for unusual theatrical costumes too. He had the obvious charisma, and his vocal style seemed to me a little bit like a cross between Vincent Price and Johnny Rotten. He sometimes called himself the art gangster, or else the vagabond king, and there was also something Victorian or perhaps Edwardian about him too. He was always animated and got a good response for whatever act were to appear. Were they good or awful or downright terrible? Everybody got a good crack of the whip. <clears throat> good evening by cracky, and I know it's going to be a good one. And here we are once again for the Tuesday night platform, a realm of crazy dreams and mad performance. So first up we have the new act, Mr Monty the Moron. So let's go absolutely apeshit banana crazy and give him a good welcome. Let's erupt! Yay! Clap, 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 clap. I felt at home here already. I sang a couple of songs with guitar. One was Collecting Plastic Monsters, which went down well with Ian. I like collecting plastic monsters too. In fact, all kinds of silly plastic toys and jokes. Excellent stuff said Ian. Some other regulars appeared too. Every time there's a bunch of people who played themes from children's programmes like Postman Pat and Rainbow and we'd sing along enthusiastically every week. Somehow it didn't get boring. Also there was Paul the Poet, R.I.P., who used to read Go Not Gently Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas as well as some of his own poetry. Incidentally, I don't understand that poem. When my own father was dying, I didn't want him to I did want him to go gently. I didn't want him to go with pain or anger or fear. Still, it's an excellent poem nonetheless. There was also the Upstairs Theatre Company, and just before the interval, and this became the Tuesday night tradition every week without fail. The amazing Mr. Gary Hawk. <laughs> Gary Hawk was a funny little chap who sometimes wore a cape and shiny space clothes. He had bare feet when he performed and a little piece of paper sellotape to the mic stand for his lyrics. He was cultivating a cross between Zieg Zieg Spuntnik and Hawkwind, or at least that was his intention. He had a keyboard, which he obviously couldn't play, and a drum machine that he would continually change the speed of mid-song so that he could bash the keyboard, sometimes with his feet, and yell to the drum machine accompaniment. 21st century warrior! Ah! 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 Fantasy aggression! Fantasy aggression! Fantasy aggression! The 21st century! Stuff like that. He also had a song about acid rain. I think he only had, had two songs. Yeah, the other one was about acid rain. Equally wildly performed. If he was lucky, the sound man might add some effects to his performance, but they offered, set it up for him, and buggered off to the bar with most of the audience. In the next tunnel, that's where the bar was. One had tunnel at the bar, the other the performance space. I really liked him, though, and I used to stay and watch him. He had real enthusiasm and wackiness, a real outsider performer. One advantage of Gary's slot meant that he could play for longer than anyone else. But he was always brought to a close by Mr Ian Smith, who would gradually creep up on stage behind him and conduct, allowing Gary to bring his act to an orgasmic conclusion. Otherwise, he would have gone on all night. <laughs> the concluding act that evening was myself and Alistair and the B12, Francesca and Danny. We cleared the room just as effectively. I was playing some pots and pans. Alistair was on sax. Danny had a small bike horn I brought with me. And Francesca just screamed. <laughs> what a racket. Afterward, Ian Smith said he liked it, though. And also Paul the Poet, who asked us, What are your ambitions? To find a cure for schizophrenia. I answered. End of part one.